can you approach God with your prayers and your presence in a manner that will stop him in his tracks of doing what he wanted to do? <laughs> your Harley <laughs> is broke down, but when you go to say your prayer, it's like, well, I know you really don't care. You're thinking while you're saying, Lord, please touch my Harley, you're thinking... Okay, any bike. I just had Harleys, okay? I'm, I'm not, this is a non-denominational church. So if you had a Suzuki, then you speak in tongues. Suzuki, no problem. But <laughs> if you go to pray and you don't believe what you're already praying, have you approached God in a manner that he's not going to touch that starter relay to begin with? Now that happened to me. I prayed and I meant it and I touched it. He fixed it and I had, till I sold that bike, years later, a starter relay. God can fix anything, man. Glory. Can you approach God in such a way that what he wanted to do, you can motivate him to go do it? I mentioned this last week, and it was just on my heart, so we're going to actually go through this message that I've preached quite a few times. And it's Martha's doubt and Mary's faith. We will be in John 11. If you'd like to turn there, we will be there most of the time. I think I'll jump over to Luke one time. John 11, 1 through 6. Lord, touch us through this scripture. Now a certain man was sick named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. It was that Mary which anointed the Lord with anointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. That puts a piece together for some of y'all if you ever do some intense, deep studies of the different Marys, okay? Therefore, his sisters sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. And when Jesus heard that, he said, This sickness is not unto the death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. He's not sick just to be sick. He's sick so that I will be glorified before y'all. Amen. Amen? Now, Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. He loves them. So what's he going to do? He's going to get up and run over there, right? Next verse. When he had heard, therefore, that he was sick, he abode two days, still in the same place where he was. I mean, that... There must be a mistake here. Did that verse belong there? He stayed in the same place. He chilled out. <laughs> I mean, he, the one he loved is sick. I mean, we've got to put it in context about these three people, okay? Jesus... He had many disciples who followed him, and they believed in his message, and they followed him because of the miracles. They believed in what he preached, but he only had a few friends. Amen. He had the 12, and now then Peter, John, and James were like the favorites. Come on. He had his challenges, too, because out of those 12, one, yes. Betrayed him, one carrying the money. <laughs> and, and, you know, he even had his secret disciples. Y'all remember who those two are? The secret disciples. Nicodemus comes at night to try to figure out this new birth thing. You cow, can you be reborn? And Joseph of Arimathea, he gives up his own tomb, which is brand new and never had a person in it, to put Jesus in. They definitely were secret disciples. They were Pharisees. Amen. But their true colors come out when it, mount, when it really mattered. But in all the history of the Gospels, and when we read about the story of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we have three reoccurring names that's not part of any of this. And that's Lazarus and Mary and Martha. They were true friends, and he definitely loved them. I know he loves all of us, but don't, don't think... I mean, just think about how much he... The one that you love. They expected him when he got this message to jump up and get there you know they're the same ones that invited jesus into their home to rest bethany's about two miles from jerusalem 
And I can relate to getting away. You don't have to go very far just to get some rest away from the, the, the hustle and bustle of the regular day. Some of you all know that my wife and I have pulled up here to the back and hooked up our motorhome and stayed back here for over a week just to get away from some other things. Everyday life. We have stayed up here as long as two weeks in our motorhome. And for those of it that don't know, I just live one and a half miles down the road on Main Street. I'm, the, I'm that close, but we get in the way. That's all it takes. And so this was a place of refuge for the Lord and Savior to go from all those. He has his storms to deal with. He wants his privacy. Amen. So he does his deal and his thing in J Jerusalem, and then he goes over to Bethany with his friends that he loves so much. Mary and Martha. We read about them also in Luke. And it's this, this, this part here is it, something that we, uh, we all deal with. Somebody needs to hear this this morning. Now it came to pass as they went that he entered into a certain village and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. Now Martha was cumbered about such much serving and came to him and said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister hath left me to serve alone? I'm doing all the work. Bid her, therefore, that she help me. Make her get up. She's sitting there doing nothing. Make her help me do this and get ready. We're going to serve you. And Jesus answered and said, Martha, Martha. I can see Martha. Thou art careful and troubled about many things, but the one thing that's needful, and Mary hath chosen that good part which shall not be taken away from her. She just wanted to hear Jesus talking to her. Some of y'all in here need to listen to this. You need to take this to the bank. You need to take this with you when you leave today. If you came in expecting some of y'all, this, this right here is what pertained to you. You are so busy that you don't give Jesus any time. Amen. The Lord's there. And Martha's making sure that the fork's in the right place and the spoon's in the right place. Y'all getting this, right? And she wants this dusted just right and she wants this just right. Jesus don't care. He wants you to spend time with him. He'll walk around your chainsaw on your bicycle that's in your room. Somebody need to hear that. Anyway, y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Anyway, Martha was the practical one. She was the planner. She was the host, the organizer, if you will. She orchestrated it. There's a lot of stress there. Martha, Martha, just slow down and listen to me. Amen? And when he says careful, we kind of, oh, that's cool. Careful's okay, right? Careful actually means anxious about. And troubled means disturbed. And she's complaining to Jesus that Mary wouldn't help her. The good part is to listen to Jesus. Amen. Now back to the story. We're at this point in their lives when there's a true crisis. A true crisis. Now, Martha is the one that's the organizer, orchestrator. She's host. She's all practical. And Mary's just on fire for Jesus, you know. Lazarus has gotten very sick. And they just know that if they can just go tell Jesus, surely he'll come. And he's healed lots of other people, complete strangers. Come on now. All they desired was that he would come. Just come. So summoning their swiftest messenger, I mean, they don't say that, but they got somebody to go, right? If you were going to get somebody, you'd get the guy that can run the fastest, right? Or the fastest donkey, whatever. So they, they send this person. But instead of dropping everything and going, Jesus chills out. He waited two days. Some of you all know that that two days is what made it be four days. Even if he would have left, even if he had have left immediately, when he got there, Lazarus would have been dead for two days. And there's a big reason theologically why jesus wanted him to be dead for four days all the locals 
All the different religions believed that the spirit hung around for three days. Now, I don't know how they got come up with this, but the spirit hangs around for three days. So to be really resurrected from the real dead, it has to be longer than three days. But the only way to be resurrected in their eyes, all the different faiths, was that it has to happen within the first 72 hours because after that, the spirit can't res be resurrected within the body. Anyway, back to the story. John, back to 11, we'll be there the rest of the time, 17 through 19. Then when Jesus came, he found that he had lain in the grave four days already. He knew, it's just so that we understand. Verse 18, now Bethany was nigh unto Jerusalem, about 15 furlongs off, like I said, a couple miles, okay? Unless you're riding a bicycle, then it's 10. Verse, verse 19, and many of the Jews came to Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. Mourners gather, there's paid mourners that make the mourning and they're, you know, just weeping out loud and then there's comforters that provide comfort so there was quite a crowd that's gathered i mean it's, it's like two miles so that's a lot of people amen when someone came in and stood the, into the hushed room and they whispered to martha they told martha that the, that the savior was coming that jesus was coming down the road and she leaves mary alone she goes by herself Now, have you ever blamed God for anything that didn't turn out right? Let me take that back. If you've never blamed God for anything, raise your hand. That's what I thought. We all are guilty of blaming God for not getting something, you know, a prayer answered or whatever. When, when we read this next part, this is 20 and 21. This is, this is Martha. It's as soon as she had heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary sat still in the house. That's why I say, she must have been, it must have been whispered to Martha. Because we know Mary. Mary would have wanted to go see Jesus. These are just assumptions. Amen. 21, then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. If you'd been here, he wouldn't have died. You know, you can make the same words sound a lot different depending on how you read it and what context you think it's being presented in. So just, just let me, you can, you can humor me because I'm up here and I can tell you how I want to tell you. But <laughs> if Jesus, it's like saying, Jesus, if you really cared, you would have been here. Jesus, it's your fault that my brother's dead. Almost as if, if you would have been here, he would not be dead right now. You just let me humor for a little while. Don't get mad at me yet. Huh? We'll, we'll get to why I'm saying that. but Because it doesn't tell us how Martha approached Jesus. We just know she walked up to him and said this. Right? It's almost as if she's basically slamming him for her brother's death. It's his fault. So I'm saying that she's got this doubt. She don't have this faith, but yet this next, this next verse, it sounds like she has a lot of faith because, well, let's just read it. Amen. But I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it to, her, to thee. Now, that, don't that just sound like she just said that, hey, if you still want to raise him from the dead, you can raise him from the dead, right? Then that's what it sounds like, amen? Yep. All right. Is she saying that? Is she saying that even now you could raise my brother from the dead? Well, the next two verses, Jesus said to her, Thy brother shall rise again. Now, if she really thought that, wouldn't she go, Yes! Yes, let's do this! Martha said to him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. That's why she didn't jump. That's why she wasn't excited. Lazarus has been dead four days. This can't happen. Y'all seeing this, right? Some of y'all seeing this different than you've ever seen before. I think Jesus is probably going, not here, not now. 
Uh, I probably didn't laugh like that. It sounded evil, but anyway, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> that sounded pretty bad. Anyway, see, we limit God on what we think he can do. Everybody in here, we're all guilty. Me too. Amen. I mean, if we ever said something could happen, and then when we're on the brink that it might happen, we're like, whoa, well, no, I don't think. Come on. Now, most of y'all know the story. My wife told me I'd be a preacher like almost 20 years before I became a preacher. She's probably never going to let me forget that, ever. I mean, I was smoking marble, drinking a beer, and I was talking about Jesus, and she goes, you're going to be a preacher someday. I said, <laughs> you're smoking dope. Has God got a sense of humor or what? But when Jesus said that he will rise again, if she'd really thought that, hey, nothing's too hard for you, she would have got excited. Should have grabbed his hand and said, let's go. Mm. Her doubt's really showing, isn't it? Sure seems like it. Have you ever messed up like this, like she just did, and get a second chance? Yeah. It's like God's going to give you a second chance. <laughs> Verse 25 and 26, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. And he that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall live. Now, if I was having some doubt, I'd be going, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I was wrong. Whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Do you believe that? She's saying, he's giving her a second chance. Do you believe that? He's standing there ready to go do it. He came there to do it. He already said ahead of time, this is so I, I'll be glorified before, you know, my father will be glorified. So Jesus is asking Martha, do you believe that I'm the resurrection and life through a person now? Verse 27. She said to him, yea, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which should come into the world. She recognized him for who he is, not what he can do. You do realize that if you don't answer the question, you did answer the question. He asked her, do you believe that I can resurrect your brother? Basically, that's what he said. Don't you think I can do it right now? And she said, I know that thou art the Christ, the Lord. Amen. I know who you are. But basically, her doubt. Now, when she says this, what does she do? What happens from this point on? Well, the next verse. And when she had said so, she went her way. And she called Mary, her sister, secretly, saying, The Master has come and calleth for thee. Now, again, that's not in Scripture anywhere. I would have thought that it probably would be. If Jesus said, Hey, won't you send Mary? We'd be reading that. And then Martha asked for Mary secretly. Now, maybe while she was walking back. Now, some of y'all can relate to this. I know I can. Lord, have mercy. That's why we, sh we should all have spiritual daddies. More mature brothers in Christ. And when you show a sign of doubt, when you don't have enough faith, where are you supposed to go? Did you see Martha walking back that slow walk of shame as she starts realizing that I just told the Lord that I don't believe that she can really raise my brother? Oh, but Mar Mary would. Let me go get Mary. Let me go tell Mary. That's what we're supposed to do, too. There's another lesson for you. When we have doubt, we all do. And when we have some doubt, when we're not sure, and we're, we're that's why y'all come up here to pray. Man, I'm going through a storm. This wilderness is kicking me, and I, I just need prayer. Amen? You come to the hospital. You get prayed for. Amen? Glory. So she's going to go tell Mary. So that's a good word for you right now. If you're, if you're dealing with a storm, you're going through this wilderness, and you just don't have that, there's some doubt there, talk to another brother or sister or a spiritual father. Amen? For intercessory prayer. Verse 29 and 30, as soon as she heard that, as soon as she was told, she rose quickly and came unto him. This next part's why this whole scripture, the, the name of it is Martha's Doubt and Mary's Faith. Because in verse 30 it says, Now Jesus would not yet come into the town, but was in that place where Martha met him. She ain't moved. I picture him still standing there going, I'm not even going to sit down. He's just there. 
He was on his way. Martha stopped him, and he hasn't gone another foot. Now, that's the word. It says he's right there where Martha met him. Can our actions stop Jesus in his tracks? Our doubt can stop Jesus in his tracks. During our Bible study of the wilderness, we keep talking about the wilderness. It was 40 years long, 40 years long, 40 years long. There was a whole bunch of doubt 11 months in. <laughs> they could have crossed the Jordan in 11 months. The only two wanted to. Everybody else. That's another whole. Hey, where's the grace? Maybe that's next week. I'm on a roll of old sermons, man. Y'all remember that? What about the grapes? Well, that's a good one. Anyway, Jesus didn't move. He sat on it. 31 and 32. The Jews then, which were with her in the house and comfort her, when they saw Mary that she rose up hastily and went out, followed her, saying, she goes into the grave to weep there. And that's what the mourners and comforters do. They go wherever the mourning go, and they stay with them. But they end up following her where? To where Jesus was. Then when Mary was come where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down. Now, this is why I say the way you approach the throne of God, how you approach God. Because listen, when she fell down at his feet, saying to him, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. Those are the exact same words as Martha. But look at how it happens. She fell at his feet. Now, I want to explain her mood. is obvious. You can see her mood is different. She approached God different. But when she fell at his feet, some of us might picture she got down, she bowed down or whatever. I want to explain that word fell means that she literally fell forward while in the process of still walking. Has anybody in here ever approached the throne of God almost at a run and be prostrate on the ground before the Lord? Has anybody done that? You just, amen, brother. I, my wife and I did when Thad was on his deathbed. And, uh... <coughs> It was on a Sunday. We were at the hospital. And he's just hes just not going to make it. They've just determined that. He's on life support and is just really grim. We got on our bike and we rode to our church we were going to at the time because it was supposed to be Christian Motorcyclists Association bike night. Guess who was supposed to be running that? The president, right? <coughs> and when we got to the parking lot, we was running. We, we were literally between a fast walk and a slow jog. To, people were like, hey, what's wrong? What's wrong? We're both bawling. And we both went prostrate on the ground. We weren't there five seconds. We both looked at each other and we got up. We had total peace, unexplainable peace. We approached the throne as a Mary. And we felt his, did we know Thad was going to live? No. We just knew it was all going to be okay. We just had this overwhelming sense of peace, knowing God's just got it. I handed off the bike night to my VP, and we went back to the hospital. Half of BAE was there, the company I was working for, because it just was that grim. We walk back in, start to pray again, and the nurse makes us leave because he came to life. Hallelujah. How we approach the throne of God can motivate him. Mary spoke the same words. Same words. But it was the way she approached him. And when Jesus thereof saw her weeping, and the Jews also weeping, which came with her, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled, and said, Where have you laid him? And they said unto him, Lord, come and see. And Jesus wept. Then said the Jews, Behold, how he loved him. He loved him, but Jesus knew what he's fixing to do. I think Jesus was weeping because of all the unfaith that, and unbelief. And doubt that was around him. That's, that's, that's how I see it, okay? Don't burn me at the cross. That's just how I see it. I can share that. <laughs> but, but he knew what he's fixing to do. Wouldn't be mourning for the dead. He's got victory over death. He knows he's going to have it. Amen? 37 through 39. And some of them said, Could not this man which opened the eyes of the blind have caused that even this man should not have died? That's why he's weeping. Jesus, therefore, again, groaning in himself, cometh to the grave. It was a cave, and a stone lay upon it. And Jesus said, Take ye away the stone. And Martha, Martha, Martha. She says, 
Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he's been dead four days. Y'all getting this, right? If you, if you were still sitting back going, I don't know about this doubt thing, I think you got to settle now, right? <laughs> and I just don't see this next part. I just don't see Jesus holding a little sheep, little little kid, or, or, and just petting it going, Martha, Martha, anymore. Right? Jesus said to her, Said I not unto thee that if thou wouldst believe. That's how I see it, okay? I, at some point, you just kind of get tired of somebody not believing in something that's going on, amen? Thou should see the glory of God. If you would just believe, you'll see it. Some of y'all going, nah, I don't see that. I don't see that happening. This says, then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. I'll tell you what, if I was supposed to move the stone and I heard him doing like that, I'd be getting that stone out of the way. <laughs> Amen. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. And I knew that thou hast hear me always, but because of the people which stand by, I said it that they may believe that thou hast sent me. So much doubt around him and so much unbelief. That's the weeping. And then he thus had spoken. He cried with a loud voice. I can't get as loud as he did, I guarantee you. But he said, Lazarus, come forth. And the, all us Christians know if he hadn't said Lazarus, all of them would have came forth. Amen. How <laughs> many of y'all know, uh, oh, I can't even think of his name. He's passed away now. Carmen had a song. Carmen had a song. It was about Lazarus. And they start calling him. He's like, hey, 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 guys, I, I, I got to go. Yeah, I could just see him. If he didn't say Lazarus, they all would have win. Amen? Some of us here right now are at a point of a miracle. You are, you are at a point of a miracle in your life. It could be a physical healing. It could be an emotional healing. It could be a spiritual re, uh, reconstitution with, with the Lord himself. A spiritual healing. You're on the brink of it. And Jesus has come to deliver it, and he's ready. He wants to. But the way you're approaching the throne when you pray to him or when you, you meditate has got him stopped in his tracks. He wants you to approach him with the faith and believing that he can. And he will do what you're asking him to. So ask yourself in closing, has your doubt prevented him from answering your own prayers? Because I don't know about you, <laughs> but I know I've stopped him in his tracks way too many times. You know, my knees, I, I've shared that with pretty much everybody in here, with, that my knees, for 12 years, I couldn't do this, okay? And I couldn't stay down, Right? And if I was down just as long as I've been now, I would have to have something to get up. I mean, I would have had to do this, or I would have had to do, but I couldn't do this. There was no way I could do this, amen? And God healed my knees because I quit approaching the throne room with doubt. And I just continued on with life, thanking God for what I did have. And then he just threw that in there as a bonus. Hope you're taking this with you when you leave today. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you again for the message. Martha's doubt and Mary's faith. Lord, let us all be Mary's today. I know we a lot of us come in here and we got some we got some Martha going on. And Lord, I'm just praying right now that you're allowing us all to leave as Mary. That we're approaching you right now in prayer with total confidence in you and belief. Knowing not only can you can you do whatever we're praying for, but you, you will. We're standing on that. And that when we leave today, that we stay on track with that. Let us all be Mary's in our faith. It's in Jesus' name. Amen.